begin the story of neuromuscular development in embryonic week 4. By this time, all of the organ systems in our body have been kind of established, including the closed neural tube that is sitting in the dorsal midline. On either side of the neural tube, we have the somites, which derive from the paraxial mesoderm. The paraxial mesoderm in the head region, although they got there first, don't quite ball up into somites, so they're called the somitomeres instead. And these will give rise to the base of the skull and the muscles of the face and neck regions. In this video, we'll focus our attention on the neuromuscular development below the head. Cross-section through the trunk of the embryo, we have the neural tube that is developing into the spinal cord, and on either side, dorsally, we have the neural crest cell populations, all under the ectoderm. Neuralation started at week 3 with the inductive signals from the notochord. On either side of the neural tube, notochord, and neural crests, we have the somites. The somites soon differentiate into two special specialized structures. The medial aspects will become the sclerotomes and the lateral aspects will become the dermal myotome. As you may have guessed from the name, the sclerotome will give rise to the vertebral bones. The dermal myotome will soon split into the dermatome and the myotome, with the dermatome giving rise to the dermis of the skin and myotome giving rise to the skeletal muscles of the body. As the muscles and dermis are forming, we need to innervate these structures early so we can can start to control and regulate them. So from the ventral aspect of the neural tube, motor neurons differentiate and start to extend their motor axons all the way through the sclerotome to plug into the dermal myotome. Not to be outdone, from the neural crest, sensory neurons differentiate and they will too start sending out their sensory fibers through the sclerotome to plug into the dermal myotome. And since the neural crest is physically separated from the neural tube, it also also needs to send out a branch that plugs into the dorsal aspect of the developing spinal cord where the sensory fibers can synapse with other neurons in the central nervous system for seamless connection and wiring of our body. Soon, the sclerotome and dermal myotome will start to morph. We'll just look at this one side of the body first. The sclerotome is starting to envelope the neural crest and the neural tube, and as the sclerotome is sprouting some lateral processes that triggers the myotome to separate into the ventral and dorsal group of myotomes, which are called hypomeric and epimeric muscle groups, respectively, and the dermatome is starting to spread out just under the Already existing wiring also needs to adapt. So existing motor fibers will split to make sure that both the ventral and dorsal myotomes are innervated. And likewise, the existing sensory fibers too will split to ensure that both the ventral and dorsal myotome groups are innervated with sensory fibers. Furthermore, with the dermatome being separated out now, the sensory fibers will also send out little branches to make sure that the dermis of the skin is also properly wired for sensory input. There are no skeletal muscles in the dermis or the skin, so there's no need for the motor fibers to go out there and wire anything. And of course, this process is happening in both the right and left side of the embryo. So on the other side, the sclerotome is starting to form a vertebral bone around the neural tube and the neural crest, and the motor fibers have split to wire the myotomes in the ventral and dorsal groups. The same thing has happened with the sensory fibers from the neural crest group, but in addition to that, the sensory fibers will also send out little wiring to the dermis of the skin. So in this way, as early as week 4, we have created adult neuroanatomy. The motor fibers that emerge from the neural tube is called the ventral root, and a group of sensory fibers emerging from the neural crest group of cells branching out and plugging into the spinal cord is called the dorsal root. And the group of neural crest cells containing all the sensory neural cell bodies is called the dorsal root ganglion, also known as the spinal ganglion. When the ventral and dorsal roots come together, that short segment is called the spinal nerve, which then quickly divides into the ventral ramus, which goes to wire the ventral myotome groups, and the dorsal ramus that goes on to wire the dorsal group of myotomes. And the sensory fiber branches that go to the skin is called the cutaneous branch. 
We can also see why the ventral root is comprised entirely of the motor fibers and the dorsal root comprised entirely of the sensory fibers, while the spinal nerves, the ventral and dorsal rami are comprised of both motor and sensory fibers, and cutaneous branch is comprised only of the sensory fibers. Time to see this in three dimension. Here's the neural tube. Here are the ventral roots coming out. We'll ignore the dorsal root ganglion and dorsal roots right now for simplicity's sake. Here are three somites that are differentiating into dermal myotome on the lateral aspect and sclerotomes in the medial aspect. And these developmental processes really happen in a cranial to caudal direction in embryo. As the ventral root is growing out towards the dermal myotome, the sclerotome is splitting into cranial and caudal segments. And when this happens, the bottom half of the cranial sclerotome and the top half of the caudal sclerotome will end up fusing with each other. And as the right and left sclerotomes come together to surround the neural tube to form the vertebral bone, the sclerotomes have kind of become rearranged in between the two original somites. This process of splitting and rearranging of sclerotomes to form the vertebral column is called the resegmentation. Resegmentation has some interesting implications in adult anatomic relationships between the cervical nerves and the vertebral bones. Because during development, we start out with eight cervical somites in the neck region. So here are eight somites, with the first one here being the cervical somite number one, and after the eight one, this last somite is a thoracic somite number one. And as the neural tube is developing and the spinal nerves are growing out, each spinal nerve is named from cranial to caudal direction according to the somite that they are associated with. So this is C1 spinal nerve, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and this spinal nerve going through T1 somite is the T1 spinal nerve. During resegmentation, the cranial half of the sclerotome C1 ends up getting incorporated into the base of the skull. So the bottom half of the C1 sclerotome and the top half of the C2 sclerotome will end up fusing with each other to form the first cervical vertebra. Likewise, the second cervical vertebra will be formed by the bottom half of the C2 sclerotome and top half of the C3 sclerotome. So on and so forth we go in this vertebral column formation business. And when we get to the splitting of the 8th sclerotome, the top half of the C8 sclerotome will fuse with the bottom half of the C7 sclerotome, and the bottom half of the C8 sclerotome will end up fusing with the top half of the T1 sclerotome to give rise to not C8 vertebral bone, but T1 vertebral bone. So we end up losing one cervical sclerotome while preserving the number of the cervical spinal nerves, which is eight. And this is also the basis behind that interesting adult anatomical relationships. Because of the C8 spinal nerve preservation, all the cervical spinal nerves emerge above the associated cervical bones until the C8 spinal nerve, which emerges below the C7 cervical vertebra. All the rest of the spinal nerves, starting from T1, will emerge below the associated vertebral bones. So the T1 spinal nerve emerges below the T1 vertebral bone and so on and so forth. So once again, embryology explains the adult anatomy.